<laughs> We're not. <laughs> okay, it is 5.30 on Tuesday, January 3rd. I'd like to bring this uh, meeting of the Village Board of Trustees to order. Um, the first item on our agenda is citizen comments. Are there any citizen comments in the room or on Zoom? No? Okay. Seeing as how there are none, I will move on to the next item, which is additions to and deletions from the posted agenda. Are there any additions or deletions? Excellent. Uh, next on the agenda is manager's report. Do you have anything to report to us tonight? Uh, it's really a town thing because it's a highway person. Somebody retired earlier than they anticipated. Mm -hmm. so we'll be seeing ads for replacement. We already have some ads out. We may be changing them because we're just, it's a, we have an ad out for a uh, greater operator, but we're getting uh, virtually no response. So might uh, try so some. Who, who retired? Uh, Ernest Chamberlain. Ernest Chamberlain. Wow. Long time. Yep. Long time. Oh. How long has the ad been out? Oh, it's been on Indeed since last week. Okay. Well, there's people were working over the holidays and things. Your resolution is to get a new job with us. Well, that's what I, we tried to get it out there before <laughs> yeah. the holiday. And we tried to get it in the newspaper, but that didn't work. Okay. So, but you, yeah, anyways, just so you know what's going on, see you out. Thank you for the update. Yep. Okay, um, so moving on, going to old business. Um, I wanna, because our main conversation tonight will be the uh, budget discussion, that will be the longest part. I wanted to get through a couple of the other items first, um, because we've got Stephen here, um, we'll use his time right now to talk about the memorial naming policy. Okay. Um, so yeah. you all have the memorial naming policy in front of you. It's in the packet that Brittany gave you. So um, as a reminder, we asked the design review board to um, work on a, um, on a set of rules that we could look at when somebody wants to have a, um, any sort of monument, memorial, or marker um, somebody had approached us about having a, a bench with a name on it. Um, we decided that we wanted to have a formal set of rules. Um, the group was, was really great in putting together um, a, a really nice, very comprehensive list of their suggestions and how things should be used. So uh, I wanted to go through this tonight. Um, do you want to talk us through it really quick, Stephen? Oh, or I, I just give us an opinion yeah, on give us what a, they came up with. <clears throat> Sure. Yeah. Come on up, yeah. Stephen. Not really. <laughs> so I was, I was not really that involved in the development. Um, this was this was kind of taken on by our chair, uh, design review, uh, uh, Phil. And really, um, what it does is it just establishes the rules and the application and the checklist of when someone comes forward and says, in on village property. We would like to have, like Seton said, a bench or some sort of memorial. Um, to this point, we haven't had any rules, so this establishes the rules. Um, and probably most importantly, the review process. And so I had some comments really just about the review process um, because I think that we it should be a it should be a very simple process. Simpler than this. Yes. Um, so what I, what I had proposed, um, really just to change is keep all the, the application, the review, um, the checklist pretty much the same, but just take out, I think right now it goes from me to design review, then to development review, then back to me, then to you. Um, and I think that just calls for a really lengthy process when I don't think that we will likely get very many of these. And I think it can be. Um, well enforced by just having, a, you know, a one step or two step process where someone wants to do this, they have the money, um, they know what to send the application, they send it to our office. Um, if necessary, I can always call in design review or development review um, for input. But essentially, I would be in charge, or I guess not our department would be in charge of reviewing 
the application and see do they does this applicant hit all the marks um, that they need to that we establish in these rules and then I would issue an opinion that would then come to you for final approval. Madam Chair, I yes. I think that Stephen is absolutely correct. It's streamlining things. The, the, these are so thorough that he's got all the rules to look at to see if someone comes to his office to say, yeah, you did all of this. Yeah. Um, and that we then make the approval process go from his office to us unless he deems it necessary to go to development review or design review rather. Yeah, I would agree. Just anyway, I would, I would, I would make that a motion to approve um, it with that one change, unless there's. Uh, yeah, there's uh, one other change that I wanted to add, and this is really just keeping it in line with the what zoning rules are right now. Right now, in the pending and zoning department, once they get an application, they have to act on it within 30 days. Um, so I would just a complete ask, application. Yeah, complete application. Um, and so with this, and because this is this is pretty thorough, when something comes in, I think the office can say, okay, you need to. You know, make sure you have all of this and so as long as they make that that contact within 30 days so that things don't sit and so that there's some action on things we want to make sure that things move along the process and don't get stuck um, i would just ask that he get in contact within 30 days and get that process started so that it can get to us pretty quickly within 30 days of somebody coming in yes you're saying yeah he gets back to us or he 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 gets back with them with to get the application completed oh and then I think we can also add within 30 days of complete application, we have to act on it. Yeah, I, like I just want to make sure that nothing gets sort of pushed to the side or it's easy, especially over holidays, as we've seen <laughs> for things to get moved around. Um, and, uh, and but that doesn't mean that we have to make a final yes or no decision. This if you go through this and this was very thoroughly done, it talks about having of not only a full proposal, but uh, money put aside for maintenance if that's necessary. And there's insurance that's part of this. Um, so this doesn't necessarily have to be, he gives us an information and then we say yes or no. We could say, okay, we need more information. Um, so we can certainly be more thorough and if, we, if, if it calls for it, but. Sure. It's really all our, our, what our office is responsible for is just, we take in the information, do a review, is the application complete? Um, if not, collect more information. Um, if it immediately meets all those criteria, um, or if it doesn't, I would just relay essentially an opinion to you. Right. Say, this is the material that I received. This is what we did to review. This is why I think it should be approved or not. And then leave it up to you to decide. Yeah. Um, trustees, any no comments or thoughts? Mm -hmm. Okay. Anything from um, the public? Okay. Did you want to make a motion, Jeffrey? Yeah, I don't know how to phrase here. Okay. Uh, so, so I would make a motion that we approve the policies and procedures for review and acceptance of monuments, memorials, markers, and plaques with the change that the process goes directly to the planning and zoning office uh, for review and then the planning and zoning office will come to the trustees with a with a completed application and a recommendation um, and that we must act on it within 30 days of sent it to us. Second that motion. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay motion carries. Thanks guys. Um, and so with that the dog club bench uh, since we now have a process yay um, can we get to you the information about people who would like a bench uh, to honor the Woodstock Dog Club? And they can be the first people get to go through this process. Yeah. Okay, yeah. awesome. Brittany, can you make sure that he gets that? It's in the packet. They are online. Oh, okay, sure. Hello, everybody. Oh, hi. <laughs> hi, I'm Karen Dewey. I am the president and AKC delegate for the Woodstock Dog Club, Inc. Hi. And with me is Adrienne Soler who is um, a member of our board. Great. Thank Adrian. You. Yeah, hi. And so I was here back in May uh, before this board uh, with my husband, Pete Sigel. And at that time we proposed uh, that 
the Woodstock Dog Club, which has been in existence for almost 70 years um, and is an integral part of, of, of the Woodstock, um, that we wanted to donate a bench to one of our uh, founding members, a granite bench, and not some cheap granite bench, but a very nice expensive granite bench um, to the town of Woodstock. And, um, the board, I seemed very receptive at that time and actually even uh, suggested that the Tigo, I believe is the name of the park, would be like a nice place for that. And so at that time, um, we left the meeting with the understanding that we were to get in touch with, perhaps it was the, the zoning committee, the planning and zoning committee or the designer. Um, but of course we were still in the formidable stages of getting this bench together. Uh, which we had since done. And so I was back in touch uh, early this summer and trying to get in touch with that individual that I need to send the, the plans and everything else to. Um, and I can't recall who called me, but they said, oh, the board would like to put together a proposal to, um, to kind of set up some, like where you were just talking about some rules and procedures for donations, which, I totally agree. I mean, you don't, you really want to keep the aesthetics and everything else in your town and in your village. So um, this person, and I'm sorry, I don't recall the name, um, suggested that I, we get back at the end of the year. Um, and at that time, there should be uh, this kind of donation proposal in place. So I haven't seen the donation proposal. I don't know what the rules will be or the process but um, whatever you need from I think Adrian uh, seems to be fading. Uh, <laughs> That's all good Zoom meetings have always at this moment. Bench. We've been a big part of Woodstock for the last 70 years. Um, a lot of good work. Pardon? You were, Pardon? You were fading, dear. You were fading. So here is what I would like to recommend. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay, well. Yeah, here's what I'd like to recommend. If uh, the administrative assistant will send me the link for this process, I'll begin it. Adrian is going to be going out of town, so I'll get it done and get it off to you as soon as possible. Awesome. Thank you so much. So Thank you question. so much. Yeah. One question. Yes. Uh, is it, I wanted to be clear, you, you would like to see the bench placed at Teagle's Landing? No, that was the town's recommendation, whoever we spoke to at the town. Yes. Where would you like to see it? Ian? Wherever you want to see it. There you go. All right. Okay. Answer. Just wanted to clarify. <laughs> Thank you so much. We'll keep this very. And one of the things you should know about the Woodstock Dog Club, Inc., is we are a very well respected uh, American Kennel Club um, chartered member. I, Adrian, and I travel all over the country showing our dogs, and we bump into former members all of the time, and many of them fondly remember Jan Marshall who was uh, a longtime citizen in your community who passed away about a year and a half ago. And so we really want to go through with this process. Well, thank you so much for bringing it. Um, and thank you for being the first group that will go through our memorial policy process. Uh, Excellent. And as, yes. as former uh, uh, attorney and educator, we'll be glad to review your process for okay. you. <laughs> Perfect. Okay. Thank you so much. I thank you it. so much for having us. Sure. Um, okay. <clears throat> thank you so much. So the next item we'll move on to is the town manager goals and objectives. Well, I thought we were going to do budget. Yes. We. I'm trying to get through the stuff that we had to push through last week, through last month, to get it out of the way. That's not how the budget's. Be nice the agenda is not set up that way. See. I'm sorry. Another meeting, I always be here on time, and it's not very nice to be pushed to the end again. Well, I wanted to get through the short things knowing that the budget would take the longest amount of time. Yeah. Uh, so everybody had a chance to take a look at it. Um, did you have any edits? Again, this is a process that it's also going to go through the select board. So these are suggestions. Um, does anybody have any? I have some comments. Yeah. Um, I mean, and, and you know, <clears throat> some are 
it's his goals and objectives. Right? Mm -hmm. So this is stuff we want to give Eric when he sits down at his desk on February 1st. Well, this will be the starting point yeah, for the conversation. The right? Yeah. Okay, some of these things are really to-do lists. I mean, you need to do this and you need to do this. So these are the goals and objectives, actually doing things, actions. Mm -hmm. Others are more like their job description kinds of things, you know, set a positive example with respect to professionalism. I mean, these are things that are just a given, right? So if you try, if the goal, and maybe you don't want to, if you want to shorten this and make it more concise, what I'd recommend is picking apart the ones that are on the to-do list, like this is what you should be doing in the next 12 months or three years or whatever the spec is, as opposed to something that's general, um, of which I think there's, there's a distinct difference in, in each bullet point. So I think it's great. I don't know who wrote this. Did write this? I mean, it's really good stuff. Um, every single point is really good. And part of what should involve the, the municipal manager in, in, its, in its entirety, right? So I think that's all good. But if you want to simplify this, I think you can separate the, the this is what the guy's got to do to be a good guy or whatever in town, as opposed to you got to be get finding grants or things that are actual yeah. a checklist. Okay. All right. So that's my thought about it. But whether we want to do something about it, that's yeah, guys. that's that's good. And this is something that we want to be able to use for the six month review, the annual review. Right. And again, this is something that we're gonna we'll take to him at the beginning as both boards and right. refine because it's rather long. Yeah, well that's my point exactly. And the things that are more it'll be a starting point. Yeah, the job description kind of things like this is how you should behave and what we expect of, uh, that position to be doing are are givens. Like that's you know, this is what what he should be acting like and behaving and leading the team as opposed to you know go find a grant or uh, develop a budget those are checklist things that have to be done and those are things that are definitely goals and objectives right okay. so i think we should spread it into the two categories and make it simpler that's my opinion trustees anybody else have suggestions no, I, I agree with bill it, okay. it, so the job description was already set up yeah when we when we uh, posted the position so right uh, and then so, so that some of these things are already we're part of that. Um, and if you have goals and objectives, you, you can't have too many because then it becomes uh, unattainable. Right. So it, it should be some some really whatever your five or six big ticket items are, you know, pick a number. And that's that's the way we should we should set up the, the documents. Which, and to Bill's point, that's a lot of to do's. Mm -hmm. um, I think you can just have an overarching goal. Awesome. Thanks. I think all the points are very good, though. Yeah. Uh, we're, we're, so I agree with both Ben, and, and I also think everything you included part of what we would want from our manager. Okay. Do um, Bill and Gabe, you guys want to take a first shot at separating it? Um, I'll do it. Sure. Okay. And then, next, and then next week we can look over it again and. Yeah. Passed on. I the thing you might want to do is rank them in order of importance. If that's okay. you know, if, especially the to-do list, you know, the check check off to-do list. You know, if we want to say, um, you know, uh, developing a comprehensive annual budget, that's probably pretty high on the list. <laughs> With yeah. And then securing grants might be second, and finding cost avoidance okay. might be third. You know, but we could put them in order the to-do things, and then the job description things. I don't have that job description handy, but and we maybe we need to amend it or something for down the road. We want to add this stuff. The job description exists. But um, I distinctly think there are two different kinds of bullet points here and that we ought to separate. Love it. Yeah. Okay. So if so, you guys can separate you, those out and then. Do you want to, do you want to start again? Okay, we need to start and send it to you. What would you like to do? Either way. No, it doesn't okay. Matter. Would you let me start it and I'll send it to you by, by email. We just confidential that way, right? Yeah. So we can do that. And then we can come back next, not next week, but. Next, it's next week. Next week. Okay. Yeah. We'll come back next week and, and, um, bring it to you in the separated versions. Okay. okay. Awesome. I love it. Right. Thank you guys. Anybody else? Give myself a job. <laughs> awesome. Appreciate the organization. Okay. So now that that one's done, let's move on to the big ticket item, which is the budget discussion. And I understand we have an updated version. And is John on as well? No. no. Be on. Oh, okay. Oh, I thought he was going to be on Zoom. Okay. Well, good. He should just rest. Jill, come on up, please. <clears throat> So the updated version is the shorter of the two. Uh, yeah, it is. It's a smaller piece because it doesn't have notes, and and these notes are really 
staff notes, internal communications. That's why we took them off of the later one. There's nothing that you guys have to be concerned with. They were just our notes. Okay. And uh, really shouldn't have put them on here and presented them to you. Um, the, I did take that one three for today at the moment. Uh, well, I did take it at the top one three yeah. for the moment. Oh, oh, yeah, okay, yeah. And the only difference between the budget dated 1-3 and the one that you got in your packet is that there's a $4,000 increase uh, somewhere under trustees. I don't think there's a line item attached to it yet, which uh, is um, related to the use of the uh, Woodstock Elementary High School, or um, Elementary School parking lot. Okay. Um, the select board discussed this today, put a thousand dollars in their budget, and uh, essentially asked the trustees to pick up the extra four thousand. Oh, that, what are we so then three, three quarters of the spaces would be reserved for village folks, and one quarter for <laughs> someone who lives outside of the village. Do that, I guess. Okay. Why are we? Why are we? So, uh, so this stems from a conversation um, that happened. Gosh, was it over the summer? Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So, there was at one point, as you know, the in the village, the west allows public parking uh, after hours and in the and in the weekends at the west parking lot behind the school. Um, that had. Their concern was it was not being used appropriately. Um, and so when they repaved, um, they decided that they did not want the public to park there anymore. Um, we had a conversation, me and Jeffrey and Tom and Joe met with the school board, met with some members of the school board and the supervisory union. They expressed to us that other schools um, other towns are paying for the maintenance of the parking lots of their schools, and that we were one of two towns that was not doing that. Um, they. So aren't we paying as citizens twice because we're paying taxes already? Yes. So, so they, wanna... so they initially wanted us to do a couple of things that we weren't able to do in terms of plowing and and other things. Um, and so one of the ideas that I can't remember who. Throughout, somebody threw out was providing five thousand dollars a year that would go towards in five years, four years, the repaving that is necessary every four or five years, um, and so that would wind up being five thousand dollars per year, which of course we would have to approve every year. Was it per year? Yeah, it was. Was it per year, Tom? Yeah, yeah. I just couldn't remember that. What does it cost every five years to have a repave? Well, twenty thousand was our estimate. Uh, no, but aren't we paying think, for that? Is the question again? Are well, we you, already paying for that? So, so well, the discussion that the uh, select board had this morning was that the give is to allow parking for outside of school hours, and then the request that they want to make is that overnight parking is allowed on Fridays and Saturdays by non-school personnel. And, and we made those changes and got a new sign put up. <laughs> for a while, there was no public parking. After well, we had, overnight parking wasn't included. Uh, initial, after, original agreement. And after we had this conversation, parking was allowed again. But we told them that we would talk to our boards about providing funds to rehab the parking lot. So who would be parking there overnight? I don't residents. Think. People that work at the inn park there during the day. Um, somebody that there was no. Like there's no parking allowed on Rope Street uh, overnight, so they might want to park there overnight. People who don't have adequate driveways. And currently, it's they're just allowing the public to park there between, I believe, eight and five on weekends. And so the select board is going to ask that people be allowed to park there overnight on Fridays and Saturdays when um, snow plowing isn't an issue for school. Okay, so that's that's something that wasn't the original agreement then. So that's a. a the, the $1,000 the select board voted on was contingent upon this overnight parking section. So that's an, a new wrinkle we have to request. Mm -hmm. It would be great if they grant it. They don't. 
But only on Friday and Saturday nights. Yes, because they'd have to be out of, they were talking about having to be out of there before teachers arrive early for school and to let the snow plow in. So if the people that are going to park in the parking lot on the weekend that have inadequate parking, where would they park Monday through Friday? I don't know. They didn't have that discussion. Maybe it's weekend visitors. I don't, I don't know. But you know what I'm saying? I think it was more about it's an overflow parking for busy times in the village. So there are people that know this available. You can't find a place on the green. You can't find a place in front of West. People know that that is there. They tell their visitors you can always park behind the school. So I think it's more about that. Yeah, well, that's what we propose uh, for those very reasons. But the overnight parking but part overnight to do that, that was it. This is the bonus, I think, to gain more out of this money you're going to pay. Right. Okay, so it's a contingent vote. Robbie had a question. Oh, please go ahead, Robbie. Yeah, I would just suggest the uh, the village charge the school four thousand dollars a year to close the street down for pickup and drop off times. I like that suggestion. What street? I mean, it seems to me it just seems a little bit ridiculous if they're asking for this much money when. <laughs> I think you're right. It's just my opinion. I, I, <laughs> let me let me just shut up. So that's just something. No, wait. Saying. Your opinion is always valued, Robbie. I think it's. I yeah. We we felt like um, we made this proposal rather than not have access at all. Um, so uh, if they wanted more money than that. Well, initial... school. school district. School district owns it. School district. And the school district has made arrangements with other towns to plow and to provide funds for uh, maintenance of their parking lots. And so they asked us to also be a town that does that. I think it costs us less in the end, if I remember um, Ben Ford explaining all of this. If, if we let the school budget go up more, we end up paying a dollar in the school budget costs us more than a dollar on village taxes. Is that right? Is that your understanding? I think like that. <clears throat> yeah. Uh, as much as I agree with Robbie, I don't. I don't want this to cause the school budget to go up in order to pay us back. Uh, so I guess we. This is. We have to wait and see. What happens with this new request for overnight? Do we want to I mean, we back can, that request? I mean, we can. I don't see the need for for the overnight part. Neither do I. But the select board does. Um, um, I don't see the need for it. I, this is for when town village is busy with the events and stuff, like Zoe said, and and to enable parking uh, during the daytime. Well, let me ask. And this. during vacations, not just weekends. During school so, vacations. We can need overflow parking on Friday and Saturdays. I don't know how much we use it, to be honest with you. I do know we do park cars over where the court municipal building is. Mm -hmm. So we do use that on the weekends as overflow. And Susan mentioned as employees that sometimes where employees mm -hmm. park. I don't know that for sure. I can't I can't answer that question. She, she does because she's yeah. an employee. I know well okay. <laughs> but that doesn't speak for all employees. But um the the administration lot is fairly empty on the weekends, and that's that's the overflow. So during the week, it's a different story because we have plenty of people working in that building. But I can't I can't really speak to how many employees park in the grammar school parking lot. So I don't know that. So it seems like we can either ask the select board to modify their request uh, for the overnight part, or we should, or, or we should back it. What are the other? I mean, I'm. I'm not inclined to require overnight parking. Well, the, the bigger of the two questions is, are we going to approve putting $4,000 into our budget? Yes, okay. I, th I think so. We want the parking. So we are paying basically $4,000 a year to be able to have additional parking. I'm in favor of that, but everyone else has to be. I think I'd like to have a discussion about this further. Okay. Well, go ahead and discuss, Brenda. Yeah, I, just, I just think budget. that if we're going to spend four thousand dollars 
of village money on parking, why not take a look at uh, renting spaces from the Historical Society in the tune of $4,000 where we have better uh, parking? You get three spaces, maybe, at most there? On just weekends. Because that's all we're allowed to use it, right? That's the only time we're allowed to use parking at the school is on weekends, correct? Uh, uh, at, at school vacations and all summer and all long. Summer long. <laughs> It's a lot more parking spaces than mm, renting agree, two or but... three from the history, history center. Bill? I don't have the background. You all know the town better and the spaces and the parking and the size. And I, I just kind of have to abstain from kind of vote on this. Well, no, we've been, we've lived here the exact same amount of yeah. time, Bill. Well, I, but you're much smarter than I am. <laughs> well, I don't think that's. Well, that's okay. But um, I don't have any comments. I just listen. This point. Thanks. And then just have something. Yeah. If you've already had an agreement, there's five thousand. Is the question about your portion? Is it the four, or is it the four, is it the question of the approval? It's uh, it's two questions. The first is it was something that in that meeting we told the school board we would bring to our boards. So it was not a this is definitely happening. It was because of course. So the agreement is pending the board approval. It would be yes. Okay. I mean, because we can't, in that meeting, we could not make decisions because the door, boards obviously have to. Yeah. So the boards have to make that decision. And it sounds like the select board has made a decision of $1,000 out of the 5000 Yeah, it's unfortunate. Um, because as Gabe said, people in the village get taxed twice. So we're paying for it no matter what. No matter if we spend the 5000 in the town or it's the 5000 in the village. Except to Jill's point, course, five thousand in the five thousand is a town or distributed about more people. That's true. That's true. Thank you. So we've already agreed to this with the supervisory union. They wanted the select board wants to change one aspect of it. I almost feel like we need to speak to the select board. I, I don't think the select board will be sticklers on this overnight parking thing if, okay. if the trustees are agreeable to paying four thousand. I think that was just kind of a let's ask for this and this is probably available to us. I don't think it was a make or break. Uh, oh, right. Well, yeah. if we're gonna if we're gonna go along with it, I think it would actually be like a good added bonus. But I just and if they say no, you'll you'll say no. Like if they said no overnight parking, would you then say no? If the school said um, it? I don't know. I don't I don't since it wasn't part of the original yeah, no, I don't think why as you're talking about four thousand dollars and you actually have a budget in front of you to agree of six hundred and thirty nine dollars thousand. So it feels like you're not focusing on what's important. Well, this was the first item that was brought up to us, so we're discussing the first item that was brought up. Um, does is it I'm in favor of spending the four thousand. Okay, you're in favor of spending. Let's, let's find out. Where but not overnight. I don't care about overnight. Okay, so four thousand dollars, regardless, regardless of, overnight. of overnight. Okay. Would you like to make a motion? I would. I would move that we include the four thousand dollars in the budget for the purpose of the use of the elementary school parking lot. Uh, <laughs> All in favor? Can we just define the time? You're talking about overnight, talking about the daytime. My notes from October 11th say um, put, they put a sign up saying parking okay from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m., yes. not overall. So that's the timeline that yes. Jeffrey's talking about. In his With notes. the current standing. And the number of parking spaces are roughly, since I'm 30. 36, 36, 30. I think. 36 parking places I during the day. 25 to 30. So. Oh, 30? Oh. I'm just guessing. It's, yeah. it's, it's not two or three. Big. It's a lot. It's a couple dozen or something like that. Yes. All right. So 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. is all day. Yeah. No, that's that's the weekends. Oh, okay. That's weekends at that at school vacation. Weekends, holidays, vacation. Okay. Thank you. Sure. So all in favor? Aye. 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 At, opposed? Dave opposed? Brenda's opposed. Okay. Motion carries three to two. Let's move on.
to the rest of the budget. Okay. What's been updated since, with the exception of that? The planning and zoning numbers. Yeah. Okay. They've, They've gone, down. gone down. They've gone down. The revenue has gone up. Um, let's see. Uh, moment that is uh, item uh, 4051 dash 000. It's gone up from 10,000 to 26,000. And the percentage of the revenue or the expenses has gone down by 5%. Where's the wait a minute? Where are we? I'm sorry. So the first one is the revenue has gone from oh, the 10 to 26. Yes. And then where was the expenses? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. 5070. So two things have happened, yes. The costs have gone up to account for a full time administrative person. And the costs have gone down to account for a 60 40 split where this town pays 60%. It used to be a 50 50. But didn't we also previously we had a, a full time person in planning and zoning, meaning the half time person, and then another full a full time position. So two full time people. Two full time people. And now, just, and now the budget is one, just. One full time person plus uh, two full time plus two full time people. So uh, the, two full time people. Period. 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 Yes. Yeah. And last time it was two and a half. Yes. Yep. Yes. Okay. If so, I've removed right. the option. What I last presented to you right. was three full time employees. We have now right. removed Boom. that right. third full time and gone back to what has has always been, or yes. at least for a long time, yes. uh, two full time employees. Right. And then there was a change in the split between the town and the village. Yes. Can you explain that to us? Um, the town, not only the revenue, but the expenses, um, the resources, which is staff time, um, about 60% of it gets used on the town and 40% on the village. And prior, the split was different. It has, it has historically been sort of 50 50 um but it's kind of been more so of a 50 50 split in in employee wages benefits and then kind of over the place with other things um so this is just establishing what i see to be the actual um cost benefit split okay so this is a more equitable in, in my opinion a more equitable split between the between the two yeah. and the select board include that today okay the titles of positions again are <clears throat> uh director of planning and zoning which is my position right. um and then the somewhere along the lines of executive assistant or planning and zoning administrative assistant The title of the of the assistant has changed over time. Right. So it's it's, it's over. It's, it's yep. Big time. Okay. Yep. So you know, the last time we met, bottom line when you were walking away, John was figuring it was the three percent increase. Right. And now it's a five point nine. Just So this is a so the so maybe you now you want to go through it line by line. Good have to because that's six percent or five point nine percent too high an increase. It, we were at three percent last time. Uh, so I don't I don't understand. think we were at three percent last we time. Were. Yeah. We, were. we were we were we were wait so but if we have more revenue and less expenses, what how did it go? So we have more expenses at administration. Oh. What line is that? Um So do you remember all the changes you made? Sorry. Total administration is up 15%. 284 versus Are there other sources of revenue still that are possible? 
So the we took the revenue down, or uh, Stephen took the revenue down for um, planning and zoning because there won't be the three people to bring that in. So a slower ramp up to the higher revenues. Um, no, no other sources of revenue. It's, it's so, for example, if, let's let's talk about parking meters. What would happen if we change the hours on parking meters? What would that? If we had an assumption, could we do something like that? Don't know. You know, we said yeah. parking meters used till seven or eight o'clock at night and make an assumption right. that there'll be X usage, right? So we haven't had time but, to do any of that okay. sort of analysis. But we could do something like for next year, but not this not year. Not for next year. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We should do it to go through line by line to see if there's any places we can cut. What are uh, professional services? Why are they going up? What line are you looking at? Uh, line. 5016-301. An accounting? So that was changed a while ago to account for Sarah. So, and I, so, and I would, that is absolutely necessary. What we've discovered during this whole budget process is the system is pretty broken and you're bringing in a new town manager who's going to need some support to build a new system. So whatever you cut, don't cut that one, or you'll be pulling your hair out next year. How much does that go up in the town budget? I think it's the same. Yeah, it went up. So is it thought that this would be just like a one year? Well, I would expect it would have gone up more than ours. I can look it up for you. So should the total about the finance committee move to our financial year? They're looking to change our whole system, which would require a lot of administrative time. Um, so it, it, we're just not sure. Um, we know that we have um, a single audit coming. We have South Woodstock. We have the DSC. There's a lot. There's just so many things happening right now. Um, and again, with the new manager, there's a lot of things to say. Most of you are right. Most, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, you two, but most of the rises are people and benefits. It's typical. Mm, yeah. yeah. And remember, the benefits have gone up by what, 18%? So to get away with 5.9% is not terrible. And I did reach out to two other towns about, you know, I just wanted to know, you know, what, where are you going to land? Nobody is landing at us. <laughs> where, where where are they landing? They're landing closer. Oh, please. They're landing closer to a thing. They're Thanks. they're being up the same from you guys. Finding it impossible to get to a three. So. Because the people account for so much of it as the percentage of the whole budget. Select <clears throat> so board came up with a five percent increase today too. Yeah, so this is well, 5.9. See, they're higher, right? For the real estate five, taxes? 5.3 or something. Okay. What was that, sir? I'm, I'm sorry. I'm getting yep. comments. Just to support for moments ago. Oh, you did? Um, yeah. Just to you and the family. And, and it's what, 5.3? It's what the select board came up with? Yep. Can't believe we'd be higher than. So, professional services for the town is two thousand dollars. For us, four thousand. That's under zoning. It was eight thousand. Uh, five zero one six three zero one. Eight thousand. Four thousand. Is this coming out of the system or is it Excel? This is coming straight out of the system. Excel. So, can we just, just a matter of housekeeping? Can we just can we just uh, freeze the frame moving forward so that we can get the headers? Can do anything you like it to. Then the same okay. Thing. I think it's the same thing. 
come to the end of my rope. What is communication? Under office administration. Five, uh, 5013-502. Is that mailing out letters? Is that phone systems? Uh, it's most likely to be phone systems, actually, but I, I don't know. I have oh, the thousand. Was that? What do you have, Jill? You had uh, 516301. Yeah. Professional services. This has 8,000 in it. For town. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And what is the, we were just asking, Tom, what's communications under office administration? What does that have to do with it? Is that the phone system? Yeah. Okay. Oh, it kind of definitely is, is because look in um, the first column, 9250, that was when the system was new. Okay. So and this is just to maintenance then. Do we know that auditing is going to cost more? Yeah, we've already received that. Uh, That's under 14-301. One four? Or 5014 five 301. Is that what you're talking about? Yes, yeah, what I'm talking about. Just wondering that. We already know that that's. It's, it's not going down, and we haven't changed our system. We just have an X amount of time for it. Their costs are going up too, so I can't imagine that going down. It's just been up 18 percent. Things that the auditors have said, and if it goes to both the select board and the trustees, is to demand such a detailed audit that it takes them such a long time. Every time I try to want something into a miscellaneous, it never works because everybody wants to know the detail. So we keep such detail in our in Nimrick, um, it just takes a long time. The fact that there's a village in town and there's continuing transfers of funds to make yeah. that work yeah. makes the auditing really, really complicated. It's just the amount of transactions that we do. It's just the amount of journal trying to separate both the town and the just huge. And we have people that work for both. Everything gets separated. Payroll is very, very tedious. Hey, that always has been without giant increases. But anyway, I know. So there's, yeah. there's a suggestion to change that. Yeah, I've heard that. With the one big lump sum. No, I love it. So what about uh, 5019-938? Eight. I'm a little confused. The five thousand dollars there for the tree fund is that the same five thousand dollars that's in the capital reserve below it? The increase in the capital reserve. I thought that you would actually just. I thought there was a split. I, I thought, thought yes, we had. We, yeah, there was. We were going to set five thousand aside for the, the follow for the following year to go into. Reserve. That's right. That's a capital reserve. So, but that doesn't that account, account show it twice? Five thousand and the thirty-five thousand. The five is in the thirty-five. Well, but there's thirty thousand for the office equipment. Oh, yeah. Oh, I see. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh, I'm looking. At, oh, yeah. yeah. I'm looking. At, I'm looking at the wrong line. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. No, that's that is what we wanted to do for the uh, tree inoculation. No question, Cindy. Yes. The objective, and maybe I'm just, I don't remember, right? The objective of the capital <clears throat> funding committee was to try to reduce all those line items that it's always talking about, try to make things simpler somehow. And it seems like we're, are we able to, are we working on that? Is I that think that's a larger 
the bigger it's picture. A really large project. Higher ceramacy. Right. So yes, we 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 the finance committee is good to say this is a really good idea and this can save you money, but then somebody has to execute it, okay. and that hasn't been done. I was wondering the, the overall complication that was one of the goals is to mm -hmm. try to yeah. simplify. So because um, having the separate capital reserve funds makes complication, makes the complications. And actually, one of the things I wanted to bring up tonight was that the, the capital plan then last year suggested that you start putting away capital reserves for parking meters from the excess of the parking <coughs> meter revenue um, and their costs. Mm -hmm. And that hasn't been done in here, but that would increase your. So the excess is 9,000. You might want to think about the um, increasing capital reserves because you're not putting any money away for parking meters right now, placements and things. I thought that's what we decided. That we've had this conversation where we have a specific capital reserve fund for parking meters. It's, it's not one in here. I'm, I'm happy to add it, but it, we have spoken about it, but it's never been voted to say yes. Yeah. You, you talk about it and then we don't talk about okay. it. Okay, trustees, this is, let's let's talk about it. Thank you. Uh, so we had been under the impression last year that the parking fund money was going into a designated fund. That turned out not the case. Do we want parking money to go into a fund to <coughs> replace parking meters, do maintenance? as we had originally planned. Do we want to designate a certain dollar amount to go into a capital improvement? If it was, if I'd be in favor of that, if it was restricted to- Just the parking meters. Having to, no, well, or just no, no, the topic of parking, which could be for parking meters or other parking concerns. Okay, so we need to figure out how much that, how much we need, how much we want to designate. Is it a percentage? Is it so? Parking meter revenue is seventy-two thousand budgeted. What line is it, Jill? Right. Uh, four oh six two. Well, that's well. We so. What did you say? Seventy-two thousand. Seventy-two thousand yeah. is the revenue, and we spent how much on new parking meters? Nine eighty. Uh, Close it to 90. 90. And uh, your expenses for parking meters are 63,400. So it runs at an excess, right? Or it's budgeted 6,500. 9,500. 64. 8,000. Excess. <clears throat> How long are the parking meters supposed to last? Well, I thought you said 63,000. 63. That's the expense. <clears throat> 63. What line is it? Robbie, how often do you anticipate parking meters need to be turned over? So it all depends. Um, they are supposed to be uh, in. <clears throat> 15 to about 10 to 15 years is their lifespan. Um, that, and the meter heads, of course, will last a lot longer, but I'm talking about the internal components, the electronic components. And so that wouldn't be, so every 10 to 15 years, we should anticipate spending $90,000? Well, not, you don't think, I don't think you have to necessarily think about it in terms of a giant turnover all at once. Yeah. We currently do budget for uh, repair and replacement. Uh, we've reduced it last year because they're brand new. Mm -hmm. um, one of those, in, I'm talking about the single space meters at this point, not necessarily the kiosks, but the single space meters are about uh, $950 a piece to replace. So if you were to set aside you know, think about you have 49 uh, single space parking meters, I think, off the top of my head. 
you might uh, say in 10 years, if you over the course of 10 to 15 years, you'd have to replace 49. So uh, whatever the math for that would be, might be safe to, to budget. How much does a meter cost, Robbie? 950. Yeah, it was 950 when we purchased them. Uh, I'm not sure what they would what they are now. I'm sure they'll you know, they'll go up. So you'd put away five thousand a year. Okay. Is that something so if we did ten yes. percent? Well, let's vote on it. If we did ten percent, that would be seven thousand. Well, if we need to put five thousand dollars a year away to be able to replace these, is do we have to replace the batteries? There, Robert? you do. Yeah, you do have to replace the batteries, but uh, not not that often. They're not terribly expensive. Probably what you have for a maintenance budget would suffice for that. What I might suggest is if you set aside, let's say if you increase your meter repair and replacement budget from 500 to 1500 to 2000, anything left over at the end of the year could maybe be Recategorized and put into that capital reserve. So, I don't know if that's possible under accounting practices. But. Is that in the, in the repair maintenance um, portion of it? We really need to a separate line item. A capital line item for maintenance. Um, otherwise, it goes to the reserve. And you can draw from it if you need it. Yeah. So I see what you're saying. Yeah. So it might be better just to put it right into that capital reserve fund. So there's so adding a line item under parking meters. It would, it would be under the capital reserve. Okay. Two five zero three nine under okay. police cruiser. I would actually add something that says parking meters, and okay. then if you want five thousand dollars in this year or, or whatever the amount is, you let yeah. me know. Not. And it can only be used for parking. Okay. For the well, and that would just be for parking meter issues, not for parking, but for parking meters. Well, if that's how you designate it, yeah. Or yeah. always has the authority to move that if, if you need. Yeah. But so this would put us in the position where we thought we were a year ago, that we were incorrect about. And so that $5,000 comes out of the revenue from the parking meters. Just raise it. Well, do we want to have money set aside for parking meters or do we want to take a ninety thousand dollar hit in five yeah, to ten years? Saying that's, that's one of the consequences with it though. Trustee? I think we should put money away. Do we have to do it this year? Sorry. No. They're, brand, they're fairly new, right? We're about a year and a half now. Yeah, about a year and a half. Well, uh, if you don't put it away this year, then you've just put more away in future years. Yeah. Because you still want to come out in nine years' time with the right amount of money. Right. It just means instead of putting away five thousand dollars this year Maybe and then five thousand next seven whatever yes yeah. it's kicking the pan what is but, but you're but you're not you're it's it's still we just have more revenues next year and yeah. less expenses I, i'm just thinking that these are fairly new so i mean according to rob robbie right it's like 15 probably 15 years of life yeah right so if we started next year that wouldn't be awful when we have other needs. You'll have other needs next year too, though. Well, uh, Why is it going to be any better? <laughs> Robbie, what does it cost to replace uh, a kiosk? The kiosks are probably about, uh, I think we got an estimate. The ones we bought, because we bought more or less in bulk, because um, we bought four, they were $8,700 at that time. But I think we got an estimate for an additional kiosk, and it's around thirteen thousand. Okay, thirteen thousand. So if one of those goes, and how long? What's the lifespan of the kiosks? Same? About the, about say about fifteen to twenty. Okay, so that's fifteen to twenty years. <clears throat> you could you could do it incrementally, I, I suppose, if you oh, want. Yeah. To. Put in a thousand this year and then maybe just build up. Yeah, we can start lower this year and move up next year. I think there is something important about starting this process because there are, I think, a lot 
a lot of things that we're seeing that are increases, a lot of it is because there is interest rates and things are costing more money, but there are things that we haven't had in the past that we're playing catch up on a lot of things. So I think it's important to start that process, even like if it's smaller, but get that line item, get it in the budget. So it's something we're doing every year, as opposed to being like, hopefully we'll remember last next year and hopefully things won't break. I'd rather look 10 years down the road than one. I was always talking about a larger fund. We put it in the capital reserve fund as opposed to not having a line item as making, they were adding a line item by doing this, right? But we're adding a line item in the capital. Within. Yes. Starting that savings account, that PD bank for this particular item, of which there is zero right now. And the alternative way was to just have a piggy bank called capital reserve right. and not call it a particular line item so that you can actually, but keep a separate account what you've put well, away for. What right. tells you where it's to go. So you don't need to create the account line. Right. So. And that really will be a conversation after budget. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So many conversations happen. But for now, I think it shows your intent. Yes. The last time that we met, I, I think that I don't have it in front of me, the um, contingency, trustees' contingency. Where one percent it says, right? Uh, is, which currently 509 801. I thought at the last meeting it was seventeen thousand. What number are you looking at? 5092-801. And remember, I think, and I think we put it in at that level because the budget increases were so low, right? Well, because well, the last budget we were looking, the last time we sat around this table, we were looking at a three percent increase, and so we thought. To put a 22,000 hit here was not a big hit. Yeah. So I think that that's the one place I could see us cutting. Yeah. So I think we did tonight what we probably did last year. We talked about parking meters. Now we have moved to no decision again. So I've written it down. You said yes to five, and then we backed away. So I still don't know what to put in, if anything, which is fine. I just, I just have to. B, the board has to make a decision. Yes, no, I think we're still talking about it, but yes. Oh, I jumped. Sorry, I jumped because I'm jumped. looking for places okay. to go. <laughs> <laughs> I have a decision on that, yeah. so I know, and we all understand what, what, was, what we're putting in the back. Yeah. Okay, so let's finish up with the parking conversation. I've got to say more incremental. Okay, which means what? Half of that. Which means 2,500 this yeah. year? Yeah. And, take, and reducing, yes, and then reducing. Well, let's talk about the parking thing okay. first. Right. Bill, hey, Brenda. Hey. I think that we should start saving. Okay, Gabe? Um, I'm fine. Okay, Bill? Start saving. Same as Brenda. Okay, so would you like to make a motion? I, I move that we set aside $2,500 into the capital reserve for parking fund from uh, from funds currently from parking. parking. Okay. Second. All second. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? No. Five to one motion carries. My only thing is not all wonderful. No. You will not you will not see okay. Parking meters over. I mean, there's not going to be. You're going to see the revenue, and then you're going to see 2,500. That would just be another line item for me to transfer from one to another. You're just simply going to see revenue from the parking meter, and then we're going to see 2,500. And in the capital reserve, there is a breakdown for funds for setting up things. Oh, absolutely. It will certainly be a line item. You will see that transfer of 2,500 dollars going. Okay. Through. For, for for the purpose. Parking meter. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, so you're not going to see a direct correlation between the revenue and the okay. expense. Got it. I just want you to have a unrealistic. Can I now 
answer an earlier question. Yes. Uh, Gabe, you asked about opportunities for revenue. Um, we believe there's some opportunities within the short-term rental station. And it's budgeted at 750 and 100 right now. Uh, on the plus eight four oh four one, yeah, but there'd be some, there'd have to be some changes that were made to do that. And uh, what would that entail? Changes putting somebody in charge who's prepared to do it. Okay. Well, I'm sorry. Some additional revenue could be raised uh, through the uh, short term rental. And Stephen had some ideas for. Um, doing more of the registration online, like Killington is doing, mm -hmm. which makes it more automatic, less people time. But we probably are not going to get, I mean, we won't get that in the 24. These are great conversations after this, we just have to be about less than two weeks to yeah. move this budget. Oh, well, it wouldn't be very difficult to, to raise the fee, maybe a smaller power though, would it? Uh, right now. Oh, right now it's seventy-five dollars. I'm basically have ten to eleven people, ten people doing short-term rentals. That officially, um, hundred dollars in forcing. So, uh, I mean, we could raise the fee from seventy-five to one hundred and fifty. Five hundred and fifty. <laughs> I, I hate to have you guys like make changes quickly and not have them thoughtful on the impact. I mean, and I think increasing revenue is a good idea. I think we have to be thoughtful in Sorry. Uh, yeah, but. Zoe, I don't want to approve a budget at this percentage and higher than the select board. Um, there was the one place that I do want to think talk about is the contingency, which uh, you know is at twenty two thousand in this version of the budget was previously at seventeen thousand. There's five thousand dollar difference there. I think I'm just my memory says that. So, so just just to clarify, the town this morning approved a budget of six percent increase. In real estate taxes. I think so. Oh, but, but Joe, they also agreed to use some of the surplus to reduce that. Right. 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 So the the effective the effective, effective increase was effective increase five point five percent. Right. Right now. With, With the fifty thousand dollars unassigned with using fifty thousand dollars of the unassigned. No. Okay. That is 6%. So right. I wanted to let you know that you guys were not over what the town is at. But no, but they are using funds to reduce them. Right. I, I think, you know, we've just added funds. We've, asked, we've increased it above the figure here. By 2,500, yes. Yeah, well, that's kind of negative. Right? Well, if we, reduce, if we reduce the contingency by 5,000, we come down a little bit. I think, that's, I think that's what we had. Uh, the figure with that at our last meeting was at 17. Uh, John, what was what was the number you gave us last month of what percentage should be put away? Uh, that was actually Tom. I was recommending. Oh, 15. 15. Oh, yeah. There's a as an un an annual. Yeah. Well, that's not going to be possible. Well, no, that's a, <laughs> but but that, that would be the ideal, right? Yeah, the ideal, yeah. One thing to, rem to remember about growth, and I, again, this is, I think, a communications issue or, or opportunity, but the actual, if, if for most people whose houses will not have been reassessed in value because they didn't, they didn't improve them, um, the, the growth in their taxes will be my estimate is one and a half to two percentage points lower than what what the increase in dollars raised is. So in other words, if you're if 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 the tax if the real estate taxes required is going up by five point three percent, 
which is the number that I had in the spreadsheet at the beginning of this meeting. I'm sorry, by the way, for being late. I felt I'm really sick and I fell asleep. But uh, if if it's 5.3%, then what I, what what I would see because I didn't do anything to improve the value of my house uh, would be one and a half points lower than that. So it'd be 3.8 or something like that. I, I, what I'm, those are, that's the gap. So if you've raised the 5.3 to something higher, for most people, you would subtract one and a, roughly one and a half percent. Assuming that the grand list continue, goes up about 2% a year, which it was on track to do after October, through October, and which it did last year. What would what would it what would it end up being, Tom? Uh, if we reduced the contingency to seventeen thousand where we were before. I mean, it'd be, what would the percentage be? Well, it's just a twenty-five. Oh. Yeah. Or the bottom line. Bottom line. Bottom line. Um, <laughs> if you reduced it to how much? Seventeen instead of twenty. Seventeen. The contingency. And at two thousand five hundred. Yeah, it so would be uh, the total would be um, six thirty six six forty one. If you reduced it by five thousand. So. Okay. Yeah, then the big five point one. So you've got six three nine one four one. You add 2,500 and you take away 5,000? Yeah, six, 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 yeah. You're back to about 5.3. Yeah. Back to about the same as the select portion. Yeah. So, so this unclassified shows $170 in 2022 and nothing in 20, is this, are we missing data here? What number are you looking at? Uh, 5092 The one Jeffrey was talking about lowering it, it was 17,000 prior versions. 509, which one? Uh, 5092. 5092, yeah. Either so that was the problem we were trying to fix. So you've never allowed yourself a contingency. So when the thing with the parking meters happened, there's no money to pay for anything unexpected, no. which isn't a wise way to run the counts. Mm -hmm. So the suggestion was to put in. Um, a contingency. Five point five. Three. We've never had one before. That's what we're saying. I mean, there's. So, so, so whatever you put in is good. The, yeah. So we, we added twenty five hundred and right. then took away five from contingency. Does that get us that? I don't know. So we're talking about changing that seventeen or that twenty two to seventeen. When I when I reduced it, I came up the formula comes up. Uh, what would it be if the contingency was 15,000? Thank you. <laughs> Point two. That we changed to fifteen thousand. Yes, Jeffrey wants to um, well, take, take no, no, five, no, no, five point two. Uh, change the contingency, change the contingency to fifteen thousand. Okay. Unclassified, five hundred nine. Oh, I'm, I'm, and at least we're not select. Okay, so we did the contingency down to 15. Yes. We added the parking meter for 2500. 2500. 2, 2, yes. The only two changes. Okay. We're done. <laughs> you hope. <laughs> Actually. <laughs> what else do you see? I mean, I do want my two cents. I mean, nobody likes an increase, but I do feel like other towns are facing yeah. very similar situations. Yeah. I don't think it's unreal. No, and that John had some very valid points last meeting. So. Yeah. Yeah. I so said we're not ignoring them. I mean, we're, we're still putting money into contingency. We're still raising, putting money aside for parking meters. So uh, the, the advice is good and, and we're listening. But I, you know, I don't think 
it's a good idea to be above the select chosen. So it's 5.3? Yeah. So we're 5.2. So we're 5.2. Right. I'm good with sitting here. At this I'm, point. Good, I'm good with that, Jeff. And then we, I, I think we have to make a commitment as a board to, to start looking at other other revenue sources for next year and start looking yeah, at early. I agree. So we don't yeah. have to have this kind of conversation. I, I agree. Yeah, we need to find some more revenue sources. Why did we come up to 22,000 to begin with? That seems like a just we're round number. <laughs> yeah, we talked about one percent. And I'm sure when I asked you to change it, I just want to know where it came from. Why we're talking about. So what else do we need to do tonight? I think that's it. That's it. And we're good. I think that's it. Hey. Thank you, John. Thank you, John. Feel better, John. Yeah, John, go back to bed. <laughs> thank you. Thanks, uh, Jill. For thank you for your work, John. Thank you for your work, John. Bye. Well, thank you to Jill for getting all this together. Thank you. Yes, absolutely. Oh, Jill. You're going to go so many things in town. Oh, so, so the next, would the next step be, so you have a meeting next week? We do. So, Zoe, would you be ready with that final final? Okay. I just went in and made those Okay. Two okay. Two I mean, we can, is everybody comfortable voting on it tonight? Oh, yeah. 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 Okay. Yes. yes. <laughs> Excellent. What happens to the additional revenue <laughs> from the parking meters? Goes into your general fund. It's our general fund. It, goes it, to it, general. It, it, it always used to go into a parking fund. But it right. didn't. Right. But you used to think it did. We, we thought it did. did. We thought it <laughs> but did. But it never did. Well, then Lawrence Rockefeller set it up that way, that the parking meter money was supposed to go into no. a yeah, No, he had nothing to do with that. No. We thought that that's what it was. We were wrong. We have officially fixed it today. Good job, guys. <laughs> no, I don't think we have to vote on no, it. It's just, we, you know, it's just a vote on the budget sure. in general. But we vote on the total budget. Total that budget. includes that figure. Yes, thank you. Yeah, we did, we did kind of vote on it. Nothing wrong with double checking or triple checking. Yeah, those are kind of internal votes. All right. So. Did we sell our old meters? Yes, Robbie sold them. That was cool. What a good, good move. Yeah, <laughs> yeah like yeah. five dollars or something. You so <laughs> you really do not get much money. The uh, the increase is at five point two percent, and that's with real estate taxes at six hundred thirty four thousand six hundred forty one dollars. The total amount of appropriations, this is, and this is what you have to vote on because this is what goes on the warning, is one million four hundred sixty-seven thousand thirty-five dollars. One million four hundred and sixty-seven and thirty-five dollars. Yep. Total revenues. Oh, I like it. Yeah. Let me make sure. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Is there anything else that would need to be done before we vote on this? Okay, so we're voting on the number one million four hundred sixty-seven thousand thirty-five dollars. Thirty-five dollars. Okay. Okay. Make me nervous coming in here. Okay, uh, I make a motion to approve the village trustee budget um, with the total appropriations of one million four hundred sixty-seven thousand thirty-five for fiscal year twenty-four. Is there a second? Second. All in favor, say aye. Uh, aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Next on, oh, thank you. Uh, next is new business, of which we don't have any. Uh, other business, is there any other business? I have something to ask, Yes. So we got the $400 check 
from Marianne said it, but in the um, application, it asks for a security deposit. My email you and I didn't hear anything back about yeah. security deposit. My fault. Um, is that still an amount we need from her or is that being waived? Uh, still we need the security deposit. Because it wasn't discussed in the last meeting. Um, so it's not something that we have gotten. What is, how much is the security deposit? 150. And she already paid, she paid an application fee. She paid an application fee. She paid the $400. She's paid the $400. The 150 is returnable if there's no debt. So it is a refundable $150. It would be 200 Two hundred. Two hundred for that quantity of people. Yes. Which event was this for? For the East End Park wedding. East Park, like the breakfast, the, the, the day after the wedding. And how they did that already? Breakfast part. We uh, we approved it, but uh, she needs to. She did not submit a security deposit, which we have as part of the application. Okay. So we still need to collect the security deposit, which okay. is refundable after the event. Yes. Okay. Be sure she knows that it's refundable. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. I'm sorry, I missed that. <laughs> is that standard operating procedures for every event yeah. at Ten Park? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Sorry. And is that to um, assure that people will leave it? In yeah. Good idea. Um, the last item, second to last item, is approval of minutes from the 12 13 meeting, from our December 13th meeting. Jeffrey. Um, you know, it was hard work to find some errors. Uh -oh. I found just a couple. Mm -hmm. Just in trouble. Okay, I don't have to edit them. So. <laughs> <laughs> no, is this your last meeting with us? Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh. Thank you, Brittany. You've been awesome. <laughs> and we're excited to have Nikki, but we're sad for you to leave. Yes, we're very sad. <laughs> so, Nikki, what, what are they? Okay. <laughs> what do you have for Nikki? Well, page 24, <laughs> number two. Go down as down to uh, under A, three quarters of the way down, the sentence beginning, beginning with the well, oh. such as, comma. Mm -hmm. And then uh, it's in, it's reestablishing full time planning and zoning assistant positions. Uh, that should be position, not an S, one position. Oh, that's right. Nice catch. Uh, that's one position. I don't know. I don't know how you start a sentence with such as either, but that's that's less important than getting that other thing right. And then on number, uh, let's see. Okay, under. Okay. Can't see what page this is. Page twenty-five. Uh, page twenty-five. Near the top, the fourth line down. Can you add er to f u r t h? Investigate further. To investigate further. That's that's it. Awesome. What I have. Okay, I make a motion to approve the minutes from December 13th, 2022 with the edits made by Jeffrey. Is there a second? Second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any aye. opposed? Motion carries. Uh, I would accept a motion to adjourn. I so moved. I second. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? 